Hey Exiles, Chronic Painless here with the Trial of the Ancestors first weekend update to my Blade Vortex Leaf Starter build guide. In this video, I'm going to talk through the most important observations that I've made and biggest things that I've learned over the first 72 hours of the Leaf. So let's get to it. First, I want to talk about Guardian Blessing. Over this last weekend, I was able to test out a Herald of Purity based setup, and I have to say it felt pretty amazing in maps. The uptime was near 100%, with me only having to activate it at the very beginning of the map and not have to worry about it until the end of the map. And getting a discount Zealot Tree, you know, more than half off, right, because I was able to get the Herald Reservation Efficiency nodes and thus get a Zealot Tree for essentially 15% mana reservation when all was said and done, compared to the 40% that I was reserving for my Hatred. And so obviously that is a pretty nice benefit to get. However, it did not feel great running this setup on bosses. Now, this may be more personal preference than objective uh, numeric, numerically based fact, but for me, I found that having to activate the buff right after I engaged the boss was very awkward. Uh, normally, right, uh, if I'm fighting a pinnacle boss or something like that, I want to pop all my buffs right, you know, as I'm just charging in there right you know you want to you want to get as close to 100 percent active uptime when you're actually damaging as possible but i don't want to be piano hot keying while i'm trying to read the attacks and focus on where i need to be placing myself in the actual uh, combat arena now with the herald of purity based guardian blessing buff in boss fights with any kind of immunity phase or even ones with a long opening monologue and especially in the trial of the ancestors itself i found that my heralds of purity you know could not uh, maintain their constant uptime from killing or even from hitting right and therefore having to you know look back and forth from my hot bar or my buff bar to see if it was still active and then you know making sure i had heralds of purity when i was actually trying to reactivate it again it was a hassle that I did not need for the, you know, admittedly decent damage boost it provided, but, you know, there are other ways to, to get damage from that mana reservation, and I feel like if your goal is just to be bossing or doing the Trial of the Ancestors, a Herald of Purity setup might not be ideal unless you are ready to really, you know, have your, your mind divided into both uh, keeping your buffs active and controlling your character at the same time, which uh, can be a little overwhelming for my potato skills. I haven't had a chance to test some of the other methods yet. Uh, I don't think that there's really much that needs to be tested with respect to using it as a Veil Righteous Fire substitute, uh, but I am definitely looking forward to trying to perma-sustain some minions, though I have a feeling that that is not going to be very easy in the Trial of the Ancestors with some of the absurd AoE that is coming out uh, in that mechanic. And uh, speaking of the Trial of the Ancestors, uh, I have found great success there thanks to the power of Freeze, right? Virtually every monster in there can be frozen, uh, including, you know, almost all the bosses, with the notable exception of the Rangokurai tribe, uh, whose boss can never be fully slowed and has several units that also cannot be fully slowed. So if you are uh, worried about him, make sure you either fight him right away or try to avoid him the whole time because his inability to be frozen definitely makes him the most challenging of all the opponents we might face uh, in the arena there. But aside from him, Freeze just wrecks shop 90% of the time, right? If you've ever played uh, an auto battler, or honestly, I find that this mechanic feels more similar to a castle fight for you uh, Warcraft 3 aficionados, uh, where you know, you're know you kind of building structures that constantly summon units uh towards uh the enemy base and you know you have to sort of manage that as opposed to just you know letting a battle play out and you know so i feel like it's very similar to that and if you've ever played one of those games you know how powerful crowd control can be and freeze is just splendid when it comes to that right especially with blast freeze right you might think oh blast freeze that's a mapping tool right proliferation but in the Trial of the Ancestors, what the Blast Freeze does for you is helps you get over that freeze threshold on the beefier targets, right? If there's a, a beefy target standing right next to a weaker target and you apply a huge freeze to that weaker target, well, 
Blast Freeze is going to go ahead and copy paste that over to the beefy guy, even if you couldn't have frozen him at all or, you know, for nearly as long. So definitely don't drop that notable uh, if your goal is to get a high rank in the trial of the ancestors. But as great as Freeze is, I don't know if it's going to be the ultimate answer, right? I don't know if DPS is going to be the only solution that we need as it was in the Sanctum. It does seem like there are just a pretty uh, absurd amount of AoE and off-screen attacks that are happening in the trial of the ancestors. And I feel like I'm going to need to tank up at least a little bit uh, in order to avoid uh, some of those random deaths there. Um, but for now, I'm still pushing my DPS and still pushing up in the rankings. Uh, I'm getting into the mid 300s. I think I'm over 350 now and, uh, you know, not slowing down just yet. As for overall strategy, you know, I think that's still largely being solved. Flanking is obviously really important. And I like using the boars for that personally. Uh, I've been having good success with the Hinokora's horn, uh, trying to prevent some of the enemy respawns. You know, there's there's a lot of theories floating around. Um, you know, if, if you see anybody having success, at least give a try to what they're doing. Uh, you might find that it works for you, or you might find that uh, you need another tack. As for your particular role in the trial of the ancestors, I like to focus on picking off targets on the edge of the fight, you know, just locking them up with freeze and taking them out, right? You can easily just one tap freeze most of the uh, flanking mobs that the enemies are going to be throwing at you. Uh, and that's obviously great for, you know, preventing damage to your totems there. And once you kind of condense the fight into the middle, that's when you can really take advantage of blast freeze, just pro proliferating uh, the strongest freeze you have to everyone on the enemy team. Uh, so, you know, try to mark up the main enemy leader and, you know, just sort of hit them whenever they have somebody next to them. Or if you are able to just freeze them naturally, of course, you can go for it. But I like to wait until they have at least one ally next to them to give me that extra reliable freeze. Veilblade Vortex is another crucial factor for success in the Trial of the Ancestors. Make sure you're spamming that pretty much as often as possible, but also trying to save a charge or two if you can as the fight is wrapping up, as it helps a ton if you can open up the battle by introducing uh, the enemy team to two giant whirling blades of death. With respect to how you actually want to build your character, in addition to playing it, I have found that the Elementalist is so far, it, it, on paper, it just it looks better. Uh, I haven't tested how Profane Bloom might feel in the Trial of the Ancestors. I feel like it's either going to be incredible or completely useless. Uh, so I will get back to you on that. Uh, but in the meantime, the Elementalist, uh, especially when you consider the Heat Shiver synergy that I talked a lot about in my last video uh, from the prior league, is really powerful in the trial of the ancestors because for pretty much the first time ever we actually care about how fast we're killing stuff that is frozen right besides if you're just doing some sort of uber boss farm where your kill time is really a substantial portion of the actual farming right in general uh killing a frozen monster in three seconds or five seconds is not that big of a deal but in the trial of the ancestors Every second you spend actually killing something is a second that you are not potentially doing damage to a totem. And so just erasing monsters as fast as possible is super important, even if they are frozen. So Heat Shiver, very good if you can make sure that you are still reliably getting those freezes with, of course, giving up some of the cold damage that you could get from a more uh, standard helm. The last thing I want to say about the Trial of Ancestors is something that I mentioned in my little mini video uh, that I put out yesterday, and that is if you find that your brittle ground is breaking, and you will if you're dying and respawning at the totem, all you have to do is re-equip your boots and it should uh, reactivate. Uh, so it's, you know, it's annoying, uh, so try to make sure that you don't have any golems or auras in your boots if you can, and you know, just uh, do a quick little on off and you should get your brittle back up and running to help ensure the dps is still coming out on those beefy targets that about covers the new leave mechanic uh, i'm still waiting on spellblade support to be added to path of building so i can really get in there and play around with it uh, but in the meantime you know the build is functioning as expected which is you know to say quite well and i'm gonna just continue blasting and i'll see you next time try to stay painless